cream girl channel it's gonna be a get ready with me i'm going out today I'm gonna be doing my face yeah you know um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe press the subscribe button down below down below all my social media information is always in the description bar let's get into it Ooh, snap. okay so i'm gonna start by putting my contacts in because the girl can't see nothing 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 I probably should stop sleeping in my damn contacts. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going out today. I haven't been out in forever. Um, this is the Elf setting spray. I'm gonna use this. It kinda has a base. Not my primer, but that's like a moisturizer. I haven't been out. I don't know what to wear, obviously. My hair is burgundy. So I'm going to be doing um, a burgundy brow to kind of match my face. So I use the Nika K Auto Lip Liners that I use them for my eyebrows. And I'm going to use the shade Indigo and Plum, which is the Plum is like a dark red and Indigo is like a dark violet. And I kind of use these two together to get the same color as my hair ultimately i haven't been anywhere in a long time and uh i kind of just say to myself my personal life has been going to shit not being in school this semester is a blessing and a curse i've been working on my website originally my first blog was gonna be about um kind of why i left but then i thought about it and i just don't time is up well okay i talked to camry about it my best friend who y'all know obviously but um i was talking to her about it and i just feel like i'm in a different place like it was so much stuff that was happening when i was at school that i just never really talked about because people just had this perception of me and i think i was it's like i abandoned one persona of myself as far as like being an athlete to be more social and then um when i started becoming more social it was just like even more expectations and i don't really like letting people down so it was a lot of stuff that i kept to myself that was happening at school, like a lot of stuff I really felt personally about. Ultimately, I had to get myself out of there. Like my last semester of uh, school, I was just so depressed. Like I didn't want to be there. I hated it. I hated everything. And it was like when you're the like when you represent yourself as like the face of loving something, and you like not feeling it, it's just really hard to. I guess like live up to people's expectations of you being happy and it was a lot of times where people would like obviously you know I would make videos at school talking about you know school and then I actually had to show for the school and it was like it was so many times that like girls would hit me up like oh I want to come to this school because of you and whoop 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 but I couldn't even find the inspiration to even reply because I feel like it got to a point where I just feel like I was lying like I'm telling them or I'm making it seem like I'm just so happy here my life is so great when in reality like I hated it. Hold on, I think that's Cameron. I got to a point in school where I was just really depressed and I feel like I was lying. Like I feel like I was making it seem like everything was great and it wasn't. And originally my blog was really just gonna be about like from the very beginning of when things started going left. But we talked about it and ultimately we came to the conclusion. <laughs> ultimately me and this girl came to the conclusion that I didn't wanna bring, continually bring that negative energy into my life. I didn't want to bring it into this portion because at the time I was doing pretty good. I'm not doing bad now, but shit could be better. So, <laughs> really, nigga? Cam, <laughs> what do you have to eat? What is that? Is that a Sunday? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. So it just got to a point where. 
I had to leave. I had to leave school and coming back was a good decision for me because it got it gave me clarity. Like I got to clear my mind to all the things that I thought were kind of bigger at school that really weren't. And so now I'm kind of just figuring out who I am and more importantly who I want to be, which is something that I thought I was doing at school, but not really. And I'm just going in with the my this is the dark purple pencil to darken the ends of my brows. Stacks on my website as far as that blog, I really don't know. I don't know what I want to write about because it's just so many things I could write about. But I want to make sure that when I launch my website, it's like in the right mind. And it's been, I was getting towards clarity, I'm still working towards clarity, but we gonna figure it out. We gonna make some shape for this website drop. And now I'm gonna go in with a spoolie and kind of blend out the front of my brows. That's my brows. Feel like dark burgundy, kind of purplish. That we've got the hard stuff out of the way about me. Let us talk about the culture. <laughs> Twitter culture. Okay, so on Twitter, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this whole Miami setup <laughs> that they put on this girl, bro. Cause really, I'm thinking like this. Like from what it seems in the video, I'm gonna assume that it's Miami. So this girl is probably drunk, but her friend is hitting one cheek and the dude is hitting the other with the opposite hand. So it's like, I don't really know if it's like as bad as it seems. Cause it's like somebody's recording her and she's twerking, but it's kind of like in my hey head. <laughs> in my head, I was just like, dang, like you can't even twerk without somebody assume like, are you not allowed to twerk cause you in a relationship? Is that how it works? You not... was slapping her booty. But her wow. friend was slapping wow. her other Okay, we cheek. don't care about the friend. That's what I'm yeah, saying like, okay, you friend. drunk, you're drunk, you're bent over, drunk. And you're not looking at nothing, but you can see your friend on the right side. That's the and way that she your friend should have picked you the fuck up. Cause she know you're in a relationship. She shouldn't have been letting no dude slap your ass. She looking dead at it. I think we should blame the friend. You know what? No, we blame them both. I don't think. I don't know. I feel like that's a lot. Now, where she did go wrong is saying she didn't have a boyfriend knowing that she did. But it could have been a stance where he had already seen the video. They had already argued about it and they already broke up. But she just hadn't made it public on Twitter yet. It could have been that. I don't know. I don't know people's relationships. I don't know people's business. But damn, like. That sucks. You live in a generation, bro, where you cannot get away with anything on social media, like, at all. It's always a camera rolling somewhere, especially places like Miami and Padre. Like, spring break, everybody recording everything. Like, I didn't see the video. Somebody said somebody was getting robbed in the elevator. I don't know if that was he say, she say, or real life. But I'm just really confused. Like, what is going on? Do people just go to spring break and lose their host? People just, I don't know. But it seems like when people go to spring break, that's what they do is like they mess around. Like they be hoeing, they be fucking, fucking on everybody. Females say they don't, but I know that they do. So. I know I'm saying, but like, okay. Go, so, of course niggas know. You mean to tell me, so people go on spring break, right? And all the dudes start tweeting about how they fucking like 10 girls a day, but all the girls saying that they out there being wholesome. That's something's not adding up, bro. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody doing some thrashing. Birthday cake ice cream. On the top, I put NW45, and on the bottom, I put NW40 as the. As you can see, I love those, and they last really long because I got those super long time ago. Um, so for my brow highlight, I went to my real her cosmetics palette and I used the color fun for my brow highlight and I'm just starting from there so I haven't done anything else. My Morphe palette and I'm gonna use a combination of this tone and this tone underneath my brow bone. I watched the Breakfast Club interview 
with DJ Envy and Jesus and Miro. And it was a whole fool, first off. I didn't even know who DJ Envy was. I, I mean, I knew who DJ Envy was, but I didn't know who Jesus and Miro was. But I knew who Jesus was. I knew of him because I had used that gift of him, like, falling back in the chair for something that I did on Twitter. But anyway, so it was going viral on Twitter. I decided to watch it, and I have some thoughts. First off, uh... Like on the respect side, like I guess I kind of understand where DJ Envy was coming from because you can't really control what someone decides to get upset about or what offends someone. But you have to think about the context in which, and I feel like in relationships, commenting towards DJ Envy, his wife, is like as a as a influencer or as someone who's constantly in the public eye and not even just in the public eye like a regular celebrity or something like that but as somebody who's known for like going for people and constantly hitting below the belt and doing the most on the breakfast club you kind of have to think in the context of what you put your family in like you don't get to talk about everybody else and their personal life and their problems and then be sensitive when somebody comes towards you and your family because like that's literally what you do for a living and any wife i can't speak on her as a person because obviously i don't know her but i just feel like if you're a husband in an entertainment industry where you know for a fact as for a living this man comes for people you can't really get that mad when people start coming for y'all because that's kind of just what comes with the territory of doing whatever it is that you do but anyway so you know the interview is progressing and DJ Envy decides he's gonna like first off he name calls him like literally a third grader I'm like okay you could have did better than that but he continues to say that um you know that they owe his wife an apology for what it is that they said now I took to be fair I watched I watched the episodes I had to watch everything so I watched DJ Envy's little part on the show that he was on I watched the Jesus and Mero um commentary on it and it wasn't even bad like first off let me just say as a woman regardless what these said is technically true like even if you know you weren't dj envy at home you or who you you know whatever his legal name is rashad or whatever your wife knew the dj envy checks because in a sense that she's about to leave who she's married to to be in a relationship with you i would hope that she had the mentality to check for the financial stability of the guy that she's now falling in love with to make sure that he is financially able and stable enough to take care of you your kids and himself like so period whether or not she knew you for the fame or the clout I would hope that she did some research on what it is that you do at, for a living to make sure that you could support her if you know when everything panned out to the point that you guys decided to be together period second off when you watch the Jesus and Meryl like he didn't want to play that part obviously because clearly he was coming one-sided so he was saying you know his part but he wasn't saying everything like Jesus was messing around like he literally said I don't know like he didn't play that part of the clip on the breakfast club but if you watch the actual interview Right after he said it, he was like, you know, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just messing around. But you would think as somebody in the entertainment industry, especially the way that Jesus and Meryl described it, where, you know, you're cool with somebody. It's certain people I understand. Like, I'm not going to let you slide about saying certain stuff. We not cool. We beefing. Or me and you have never just had that type of relationship. But to the point that me and somebody have had conversations, backgrounds, and I know that it's a good heart, especially in something as lighthearted as that. I probably not check my wife, but I probably just would have told her like it's not even it's not that bad. One, two, as everybody keeps saying on Twitter, you talking about them respecting your wife, but you cheated on her. So what's up with that? Like everybody has to respect your wife except for you. Like you allowed to go do the fool on your wife while she at home waiting on you with the kids. But if somebody else says something, you ready to man get out of here. Then on top of that, like just man to man. From what Jesus and Meryl said, you were outside with them before the interview even started. Y'all really could have squashed it. If it was really, if it really hurt your wife that bad, instead of doing something for the clout and doing it for the entertainment, why not call your wife before the interview even starts and say, hey, babe, I'm here with them. Um, I told them, you know, I, I had a discussion with them about what they said and they just wanted to apologize to you and let her actually get an apology, like a sincere, off the record apology. But then again, I really don't know how Hollywood works. So I guess people don't really care about the legitimacy of private discussions. They just care about the clout and stuff going viral in the numbers but in my head i'm just like if she sincerely felt some type of way about that i think that the apology that 
she deserved shouldn't have been on air it should have been to like you know over the phone or to the face or babe come up here or something else other than that but then it's like okay you go off you're being disrespectful as you're conveying your points because mind you this happened they said it a while back you haven't said anything to them in this short period of time which tells me obviously you're not that serious about getting an apology that way because you're telling everybody else except for the people that you have a problem with which i don't respect as a man or a person period like if you have a problem with somebody say it right then and there like as soon as you've seen it and your wife got offended by it, you should have called right then and there you shouldn't be talking to anybody else about a problem other than the people that you have a problem with but obviously like i said i don't know how hollywood works so i guess that fake shit is just what happens whatever but then it's to the point that it's like okay so you convey what you're upset about and they went about it in the most respectful manner of like, okay, you know, I really respect how these are suppress the situation. Me and you have never had that conversation. I didn't know that that was your line. I apologize. You made it clear. It won't happen again, period. That is the most sincerest apology that I have ever heard. Like, it doesn't come with the extras, the waterworks, oh my bad, like this, that, and the other. It's sincerely, I didn't know. I was unaware that that would cause a problem that we have. It won't happen again. That is the most straightforward apology you can get out of somebody. I wasn't aware of the situation. Now that I know what I didn't know, it's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. So at that point, the interview should have been regular, but I guess DJ Envy was in his feelings. They're talking about fighting and stuff, but let's be honest. You know DJ Envy, not about none of that. And I sincerely think that Meryl would probably beat up on him. That's just what it is. The rest of the interview was clowned out. Like, they did the full, like, when I talk about publicity, they really did that. For real. I'm going in with um, this shade in my Morphe palette. Uh, these two shades as a transition color. Um, they really did that. Like, they promoted themselves because I definitely followed them on Twitter after I saw... after I saw the interview because they handled themselves extremely well like not only as men did they apologize but then it was also like well we're not gonna sit here and have hard feelings it was really working in my nerves how much Angela Yee was bringing up DJ Envy like it's not DJ Envy interview like we could talk about DJ Envy any day of the week bro like let the guests and every time something happens Angela Yee just and like bro shut up like don't nobody care about it like do you understand why you're in the wrong like really they weren't in the wrong really they didn't really have to apologize because they didn't do anything that they not known for doing they weren't overly disrespectful with the comment in its original state like they didn't drag it on they weren't going for coming for her head they weren't talking about how she looked her personality her characteristics none of that like the that was probably the most lightest joke i've ever heard from somebody in the same field as the breakfast club or Jesus and Mero. like the most like lightest comment i've ever heard less than two seconds so the fact that you even got that mad bro for the clout that's all I can say. It had to be for the clout because there's just so many different ways that you could have alleviated that situation man to man, like behind the scenes without anybody knowing, but you waited. Like, literally. And it's funny because the way the Breakfast Club clown Birdman after Birdman did the exact same thing, you would think he would know better. Like, at least be professional enough to finish the interview. Like, like I said, you don't know what offends somebody and what doesn't. So you can't really tell him that he's wrong or his wife is wrong or being upset in the first place because everybody has a right to their feelings but i just legitimately feel like it's a lot of better ways that the whole situation could have been handled so kudos to Jesus and miro for handling it the way that they did they definitely got a fan they're definitely i'm definitely a fan now like for sure i'm gonna be checking out their content way more often because that was funny and now they have a whole new bid of apologizing to people whenever they say something that could be considered bad and it's really funny like i'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, I be dead. I'm dead. Okay, so that looks. I'm still working on my makeup skills, so just don't. Ultimately. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't really understand that aspect of everything, but I mean, I guess, like, it just could have been handled a lot better, but yeah, Dia and Mero, they did that, like, that was probably the best interview I've ever seen, DJ Emmy looks like, he took so many L's in that interview, I don't even understand, like, at this point, I really just want them to take Angela Yee and DJ Envy off the Breakfast Club, and somebody did it on Wikipedia, take Angela Yee off, just have it be Charlamagne, Dia and Mero, the Breakfast Club, for real, because that would be entertaining like them doing interviews especially considering the fact that Meryl has a wife and kids like 
obviously he can relate to where you're coming from. And even in the interview, he was trying to say, if you would have been polite enough to just hear the other side of you, I feel like it's not stressed the importance of listening to where somebody is coming from when you're upset about something like yeah you're upset express why you're upset but you also need to take the time and consideration to listen to why somebody might have did what it is that they did and why they might have thought that it was okay because you might get some clarity and understanding on something that you did personally that made them feel like that was okay even though you're now expressing that it wasn't like and even how they were saying like i thought we was cool like you know no hard feelings you know we have nothing but love for you so you know what i'm saying it would never be nothing that's seriously personal but like I said, for the clout, for the clout. <sighs> Ding. Oh, snap. I'm going in with this brown tone color in my same Morphe palette. And this is the Morphe uh, 35 OM. So it's like the matte palette. Outside of that in the culture, um, what else has been going on? Twitter is really, I, hope I don't know if y'all follow me on Twitter. I be telling y'all to follow me on Twitter, but I'm sure y'all probably don't be listening. I'm going back in with those two transition shades and just kind of blending that darker brown that I put out. going in with this dark chocolate tone uh, I kind of want to try this tone that's underneath it mixed it's a little deeper but it's a little bit more gray Cardi B is pregnant I just want to say I told y'all I been knew that bro everybody's acting so shocked no have not shocked at all literally I am the mayor of not shock city I've been saying that I told my friend that and she like literally was trying or I told Cammy that and she was literally trying to prove to me that she wasn't I was like bro Cardi B is pregnant because but this is just me a lot of people got on Cardi B when she was on love and hip-hop I was on the Cardi B when she was like coming up on Instagram like a little bit before she hit her first million followers I've been following Cardi B and I just noticed the difference because Cardi B was not showing her stomach and she wasn't wearing as tight and revealing clothes as she normally does. Now you have to remember Cardi B is the same Cardi B that went viral saying that a hoe never gets cold. And even when Cardi B's music career originally first started, she was still wearing very revealing, very tight clothes for performances. If you remember when her offset got, she proposed on the stage, she had on like a really tight fit. But now all of her like, performance clothes have started getting a lot more classier which I'm not saying is impossible for Cardi B to do but it was just like it was unusual like Cardi B is a sex symbol like period feel how you want about it that's just what it is she's a sex symbol she's always dressed sexy videos everything so when I noticed on Valentine's Day the outfit from them I already knew what was popping when I seen that trench coat I knew what was popping all of our stall weekend, I knew what was popping. And I was telling people, I was like, bro, she's covering up her stomach like she's pregnant. Easy. So, really, y'all just need to get on the way because y'all need to get on the way. And I'm really just working this deep brown. It seems like my crease, but my crease, when I cut my crease, it has to be a little bit higher than my actual eye. So I'm kind of working it into what is my crease line, just so when I use concealer to cut it, um, it's dark all the way to my inner corner. That's one of the things that I'm working on with cut creases, I guess, is uh, making sure that the depth of the color is perceived all the way to the inner corner because it makes the cut of the crease look better, if that makes sense. I could go on with this one, but I, I feel like that one is a little too dark. So I like using this one because it's like a really rich chocolate. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, but in a smaller 
area. So intensify the outer corner. Put it right there. Like that. I know that looks a fool, but I'm gonna blend it out and then I'm gonna cut the crease that out until I feel like it's seamlessly blends. You can add a little bit of that dark red or that reddish brown that we used to blend out the edges of this really deep brown if you need to. I'm just gonna cut the crease. I remember when I did my first day get ready meet with me, I was talking about the actual date and like what to do, but actually, I know exactly what to talk about. As a generation, I really don't understand like what's with the, what is with the time wasting and why is it so regular? And I don't mean this in the most generic way because typically, People are just like, don't hit me up if you want to waste my time. But I'm just like, I'm going to put in my life, like, I'm 21. Like, we are at an age, bro. Like, I know what I want. Like, I know if I want to have sex casually. I know if I just, if I actually am interested in somebody, if I want to date. Like, why does everybody put so much ambiguity in relationships? Like, they just don't know what they want. Everybody wants to build something. And people act like it's wrong to say that. Like... If you want to have a casual relationship with somebody, you are entitled to whatever type of relationship that you want. Period. I'm going in with, oh, I'm going in with this color in my Morphe palette. This color. I'm going to put that on top. That's going to be my base color. If I go out of my way to tell you that you're cute or that I like how you carry yourself or whatever the case might be like, can we get out of this this phase in our generation where we just think it's okay to ignore people? Like, bro, just say thank you or if I try to shoot at you and you're not interested in me or you just don't think I'm cute, like, just say like, no, thank you. You're not my type. Like, but if one more person reads some shit that I wrote and don't reply, but this is exactly why I say to myself, like, and people always wonder, like, well, why don't you talk to anybody? It's like, because legitimately, the guys that I find myself interested in are not interested in me back. And this, the level of etiquette for me personally, like, if I don't, if you express your interest in me and I'm not interested in you, I'm probably just going to tell you, like, nine times out of ten, you're going to get a response. And I'm just going to say, like, how I feel because I'm not going to sit here and make you think that I'm interested in you if I'm not. And now I'm putting that same uh, reddish brown to start blending out that color. Just respond, like, bro, you don't, I feel like you're entitled to your preferences. You're entitled to say whether or not you are interested in somebody or not like there's nothing wrong with that so if i'm not that just be courteous enough to say that like i'm not trying to waste nobody's time i'm kind of in a place where like i want a relationship but i just want to make sure that 
when well, I said this before I got into a relationship the last time but I just want to make sure that whoever I decide to get into a relationship with is going to be something long and now that I've been in a serious relationship before I kind of know what to look for that I feel like I didn't look for or pay attention to as much as I should have last time and so with that knowledge obviously I want to perform better in my next relationship I want my next one to be longer Obviously, I want my next relationship to be longer than my previous one. So I'm just like, you're more than entitled to say like that I'm not your type or this and the other. But like, who raised y'all to like feel like it's okay to just like not say anything? Like, just express that I'm gonna respect you more and like. I guess I don't know I can't speak for other girls but it's just like I'm not gonna be beefing with you just because you don't like me like I think you're cute you don't think I'm cute like dude, it happens I'm gonna go in with the shade fabulous and put that on my inner corner and it'll blend I really like the real higher palette because it blends really well with matte shadows I'm just gonna put that in the inner corner just to kind of bring some light to my face. And this is for the eyes, baby. Elf liquid liner, by the way. Um, and I really like liners like this. Um, it's like more like a paintbrush, and I get a little bit more precision about where the product goes. I just feel like just be courteous like I'm a pretty honest person I feel like and on top of being a little bit more mature than most being mature from my age and being mature than most people it's just like I have a certain way that I kind of just go about things and it's like a lot of it has to do with my personal beliefs about like energy and karma and like stuff how you go about doing stuff having a direct effect on how things happen to you and trying to be the best person that you can be because the best things happen to the best people I, I personally believe that and I know that that's not true because good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people but but you can't just believe that the energy in the world is just completely sporadic because then in that case it really doesn't matter what you do everything that happens to you is completely random and I don't believe it I think that your actions and your how you go about things on a day-to-day -day basis directly or indirectly sometimes influence the things that happen to you in the future like I told them to wait. I'm really, like I said, I'm really courteous. I try not to waste people's time. But I also feel like it's nothing wrong with knowing. It's nothing wrong with knowing what you want. You know, like if you wanna have casual sex, then just say that. If you wanna do whatever it is that you wanna do with your personal life, then just say that. And make sure that the person that you're trying to be with is aware of what it is that you want personally in your life. There's nothing wrong with knowing what you want. The problem comes when you portray or act like what somebody else wants is what you want when it's not. And I can't be mad at anybody for the personal choices or preferences that they make in their life. I'm going to clean up um, my wing just a little bit with uh, the NW. This is, I think I use 45. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The courteous, I need for people's courteousness. I guess technically you don't owe anybody anything. So nobody has to respond to you or say thank you or do anything nice. But if you function that way in the world, like it automatically I mean I guess in a good way but it it makes me like not even like you anymore because it's just like damn I thought you was real like just keep it a bug and people one thing I hate about Twitter because the thing about me is and even in my last relationship I learned like a lot of people a lot of people don't be about half the stuff they be talking about on Twitter they just be talking like but me and my social media is a lot different because like I don't say stuff I don't mean like I don't intentionally I don't intentionally try to um, 
proceed make people think something about me that's that i know isn't true or isn't um parallel to how i really live my life in reality like i try to be honest about things and transparent about things because i want people to have a true perception of me as an individual even if even if they don't know me you know um and i just went with the black pencil and did the inner water line because i don't have lashes like that so when i put lashes on i don't want the bottom of my eyes to be the color of skin i don't like that look so um i blacked them and yeah um that's pretty much it for the eyes and now we're gonna work on the face so like i was saying it's just a lot of things that i just don't legitimately understand about how people function just because obviously like i'm a really different person and i, I kind of carry myself a lot different than most people but i just feel like it's it's like it's just the right thing to do is courteous like if a guy tells me that i'm attractive if like i don't know him or something like that then obviously i'm not obligated to respond but if it's somebody that like has been liking my tweets and i know them in real life like i'm not gonna leave you on red bro like i'm just gonna tell you whether or not i'm interested in you or I'm not or if I'm talking to somebody or if what you want is not what I want and I'm real quick with the what he wants I'm using the flawless face primer from I think this is absolute from absolute New York I'm using that on my face as my primer I really like how this primer feels on my skin I just bought it the other day so uh, I usually use my black uh, radiance HD primer but I ran out and I kind of wanted to try something different and this is the primer that absolute primer is the one that they have and just off the packaging I feel like it's supposed to be a dupe for Smashbox but I don't have the Smashbox primer so I can't speak or test to how accurate that perception is but um let me know in the comments below if it is a if it is supposed to be a dupe if you have this primer and you have Smashbox so you can use them side by side I think that'd be a really dope comparison though because they have similar colors in that one they have a clear one a purple one and a green one and i've seen that exact same colorway in the smash box products okay i'm gonna go with my real techniques beauty blender i had to go wash it um the two foundations that i use i mix them together i literally feel like um beauty by jj <laughs> because when i first started watching youtube videos she always used to mix um the revlon color stay 24 hour foundations but right now i'm mixing i usually use mocha but i actually like the mix of these two foundations a lot better so i'm going in with um 370 and 362 which is deep bronze and truffle i like the color tone of truffle but i feel like it washes me out just a little too much so to add a little bit of warmth i like deep bronze and together i look pretty darn good with these colors but like why perceive yourself as somebody that's like looking for a relationship or open to a relationship and then when somebody like approaches you about what it is that you've been talking about all day like all you do is talk about cuddling and laying up your shit and wanting to be with somebody and then when somebody approaches you about all the stuff that you talk about on a day-to-day -day basis like now all of a sudden your tongue is tied but when people are on the tl talking about all types of relationships and sex and this that and the other you always got some commentary but then when somebody's like okay so you know what's up with you now all of a sudden now all of a sudden the cat got your damn tongue ain't that something i'm gonna go into that and i just talk about on a day-to-day -day basis like all this stuff that you swear up and down you want and there's somebody and that's the thing is like i'm not with the capping like if i legitimately feel some type of way towards you or i want to entertain you like there's nothing there's nothing i'm playing about like i'm serious like you trying to do this or what like you talking about it like what's what's up like and maybe that's just too forward as a woman like maybe i should just like be one of those girls that doesn't say anything if i find somebody or if i'm legitimately interested in somebody i should just like play it cool but it's just kind of like you know the worst somebody can say is no no i lied the worst somebody can say isn't no and i now know that it's not saying anything and i'm gonna go on with fine
I don't know. I'm just different. Okay. I really want to. I really want to use Ashley D. Um, Ashley Devon's method with the body blender. I asked her on Twitter. She didn't reply. That kind of sucks. But um, I want to know if it worked for my face. But I feel like my under eyes are so sunk that that beauty blender isn't gonna fit the creases on my face like and i know that sounds weird because it's just a beauty blender like it's gonna fit wherever you put it but because these fit perfectly because like my eyes are so i feel like my eyes are extremely sunken in And I'm just gonna go back around the perimeter of my highlight with my actual foundation. Kind of go over everything to give it like a final blend. You can kind of see how those colors kind of really mix really well. Ooh. My skin tone. And I kind of just go back and forth. Like when I feel like something looks a little too light, I just go back in with my actual foundation color and blend it out. And if I feel like, um, it's too dark, I go in with the highlight side and allow for the product that's already soaked into the sponge to naturally lighten it, to balance it out. Um, oop, I put that smooth in front of me. Um, so, that's me. Now, how I set all of this is a lot different than most people because I don't bake. I kind of just powder away my life. So, this is kind of what it looks like in its final state. And I like to highlight above my lip because I have a dark lip. Okay, so my highlight is real. How I set everything is uber simple. So to set my under eye, I go in with the e.l.f. translucent powder. And I just press that into my under eye. Now I'm gonna let you know at first this looks kind of like really drying but like I said I have or I haven't said this but I have combination skin so I have dry parts and then I have kind of like um, normal parts it's like normal to dry um, so this is gonna make me look kind of ashy the reason I don't bake with this is it has terrible flashback but if I just use a little bit to actually set the area that I want to set it sets beautifully with no flashback so I don't like to use excess of this product I just like to use just enough so I look ashy in my set areas. Make sure I go. Open my lip. Boom. Okay. Then to set my actual face, I go in with the black radiance. I can't show you guys because it's cracked. With the black radiance um, pressed powder in the shade Cafe. And y'all can see how like all of this starts really blending really well towards the end. Um, this is why I use a combination of these products because I just really like the result that it gives me. Okay, I shall look. Look how much warmth comes back to my face just with this powder. This has been one of my favorites since I started doing my makeup. I haven't changed the setting powders except for when I started using the Ruby Kisses Cognac Mineral Powder, which I really like. But they didn't have that at the store, so I went back to a classic. Okay, I have to go ahead and do my hair. But, okay, now I'm gonna go in with my Black Radiance um, Contour Palette in the shade Deep. And I'm gonna cut this face up, honey, because my I have a pie face. And this is how I cut my nose. People always ask me how I contour my nose, because so they, literally, this is it. See it? I'm just, that's it. This is it. I see a lot of gurus like really cut their nose, but no. I just do a little bit of powder. Okay. Then I'm gonna go in with the sculpt shade in the center of my palette. And I kind of like to use this to blend my contour, my highlight, and my uh, setting powder all together all around. 
Shimbae. What else in the spray? With this dry, I'm going to add my lashes, which are just two pairs of stacked Demi Wispies. Put on some mascara and then I'll be back to show you guys my highlight and lipstick. Okay, so I added lashes and I'm just going in with my highlight palette from uh, BH, the same uh, BH, I mean Black Radiance, the hi highlight contour palette. I really like this because it's a really nice gold. It also comes in the palette since it's already a part of the trio. At first, I really hated this highlight, but it was I realized it was because I didn't really know how to work with it. Classic combo. It's uh, the Nika K, same as I use for my brows. And I'm going in with NYX Abu Dhabi. Okay, and that is the finished look. I'm about to get dressed. And then, yeah. I will show you guys the final, final look. Okay, you guys. So this is the final look. I have on a really cute kind of just graphic tee. I have on some black jeans that match the top. Um, I got this necklace from Walmart. I got um, my bracelets from Kohl's. And I don't know where my mom got this watch from, but it was a gift for Christmas. And just some plain silver earrings. This is the final look i hope that you guys enjoyed this get ready with me i know i was talking about a whole bunch of different stuff but if you like this video then make sure that you comment down below that you want to see more videos like this from your girl like i said don't forget to comment like um share and subscribe to the carpet cream girl channel as well as checking me out on my social media i'm really funny on twitter and uh, my instagram which is pretty much where i post all my outfits and stuff like that i'll see you guys on the next video bye lattes making good habits breaking bad habits this book is by Joyce Meyer I'm